If you need to go to one of the classes, you're dismissed this evening. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Hey, girls, don't be too tough on Greg. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, don't forget to sign the Bible tonight for Tyler. We want to give that to him on Sunday. Yes, don't forget to sign the Bible for Tyler. Chateau, you'd be good this evening now. Listen, we've been talking about the Shemitah and the, and the importance of the Shemitah. Seven year cycle that we can see God's blessing or God's judgment upon nations. We come out of a series on the coming of the Lord. We preach the coming of the Lord. This is our hope. This is our blessed hope. The coming of the Lord. We're waiting for Jesus to come back in like manner, as it says in Acts. They said, this same Jesus that you see go up from you, in like manner, he shall return in like manner. That's the way he's returning. So we're looking forward to the return of the Lord. Amen. So we know in Acts chapter 2 and Joel chapter 2 that the Bible says that these, there will be certain signs. He said that there will be fire, blood, and smoke. These are signs on the earth that we'll see things that will happen in the earth. He said in the heavenlies you'll see the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned to blood. So we're living in a, an age right now, a season. See, life is about the proper season. If you go out in the wintertime and you throw this stuff called anti-skid out, right Carol? Anti-skid works very good in the winter when there's snow on the ground. But if you take anti-skid out there in the summer and throw anti-skid all over the road, it won't work. You'll make people skid. They'll be slip sliding away. Greg will be riding on his Harley Davidson. He'll be sliding all over the highway. So we got to keep the anti-skid off of the roads in the summer. There's a time and a season. God said in his word in Genesis 1, 16, he said that I, God, placed the sun, moon, and stars in the heavens for a reason. They're for signs for certain times and seasons that God is doing something on the earth. Now Sunday we talked about the Shemitah, of which one year was 1973, of which America legalized abortion in 1973. This was the year of the Shemitah. I believe this was one of the beginning phases of the fall of a great nation. The World Trade Center was built, finalized that year, Erected on 1973, America reached the peak of its power in 1973. Several Shemitahs later, about four Shemitahs later, in September of 2001, that same building fell on the day of the same month as the Shemitah. 9-11, 2001 will go down in history. I can still remember where I was sitting when that happened. Like people, the old folks remember, well, when Kennedy was shot, I remember what happened. Well, I remember when the Twin Towers, when they fell, I remember exactly what was happening. And then after that, for the next two weeks, was one of the largest falls of the New York Stock Exchange, the stock market, up until that time. Seven years after that, another cycle of the Shemitah brought us to September of 2008. The exact same day, exactly seven years later, on that day, e Elu 29, it's the day of the Shemitah in that month, the stock market fell 777 points at the closing of the exact same day day exactly seven years later to the exact minute. You, you, there is no way anybody could humanly possibly make that happen. Seven years in exact, you couldn't make the same event happen on the exact same second one year apart. But if somebody said seven years from now that's the, the, our economy, the thing that gauges our economy, our stock market, in our country, that it would have the greatest fall in September of 2001 
seven years later in, two, in 2008, on the exact same day, the close, you would think, how can anybody even orchestrate that? It's by the close of the stock market. That's how, that's how. God, God is just so fast. He just, his wisdom, it, it just boggles me. I don't care how much you try to think and fathom God. He's just, he's so far ahead of us. The only way we catch anything from him is by what he gives us. I shared with a couple people Sunday. I was in my office Sunday morning before I came out and gave that message on Sunday. I was so humbled because I almost didn't come out. I almost didn't even give the message. Because I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I am just so unworthy to preach any of this. I really am. And then people said how the word's coming out here and truth is coming out here. And in my spirit, I bear witness with their spirit because I know the hunger that I have for truth. And I try to listen to this man or find this man or listen to that man. And there are people that I used to listen to that I can't even listen to anymore. Amen. Yeah. Oh my God, I don't want to hear that old stale bread. I mean, there's so much more happening. I mean, we're on the cutting edge of all of history. The things that are happening and then you go seven years from 2008 takes you to what? 2015. So the final year of that Schmitta, that cycle, that seven year cycle is from September of 2014, of which is past, we're in that year now, to September of 2015. So I start watching and listening for events. Because remember what the signs in Genesis 1.16 mean, when the sign says, slow down, Guess what you better start doing? Slowing down. Red light up ahead. You better start looking for the red light. Sharp bend. You're looking for these things. That's what the signs are there for. To tell you when the thing's really going to happen so you can look forward. Get your life in order. Now, I'm, I'm talking to people. I mean, Christians that are like, they have no idea what's happening. So I count it an honor and a privilege to be able to know the things that we know in a very humble sense. Amen. So me and Deborah was sitting in the house the other evening and watched TV. Not that much. A couple hours before we pass out every now and then we DVR stuff. And I was listening to this 700 Club, I think, and there they had the, the uh, Pope on there. And they're saying about all oh, the Pope's doing this and the Pope's doing that, blah, blah, blah. And, the Pope. and I'm thinking, hey, Someone said today, well, someone's a really good Catholic. I'm like, well, we really better pray for them then. Now, there was a year and there was a time where, okay, people fought this and did that, but I mean, it's things as there becomes a division between good and evil. Amen. Yeah. Right, there's clarity now. There's no more gray area. I'm like, oh, well, they're a good Catholic, and they're a good this, and they're a good that. And I think, how can you even sit in those churches? How can you light candles to Mary? How can you preach purgatory? How can your priest be sexually molesting young boys for years in the church trying to hide it? And then the Pope that comes out of nowhere that's supposed to bring righteousness and holiness into a religion is, is, is legalizing and supporting the gay marriages, same-sex marriages, saying that the church needs same-sex marriages. I mean, what is happening? You talk about when we read in Isaiah 5 verse 20 where it says that these people this is what brings judgment on a nation that they call good evil and evil good there's no right or wrong anymore as a matter of fact the men that preach against it they think you're wrong they think you're a bad person you're a mean person no you're a person that's called for truth Years ago, when things began to slide, I used to say, What? You gotta be kidding me! They're letting that person get behind the pulpit! You're letting those people preach and teach! Then you watch over years what happens. Because I've always said something Time is the 
true test. Amen. Time is the test. You want to find out who your friends are? Watch them over time. You want to find out who's going to be with you in ministry? Give it a couple years. Talk's cheap. Uh, I'm never leaving. I'm going to be there. This is God ordained. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then the next week, you never see him again. Listen, I tell a tree by the fruit it bears. That's my role. I've been up and down with so many different people that swore this and promised that, and I'll do this, and we'll do that, and you'll do this, and I'll. And after you've been through about 5,000 of them, it dawns on you. It's unbelievable. But what I was saying about when I turned the TV on and they were saying about how great this Pope was and the things that he was doing, and then all of a sudden they said one of his major events where he's going to somewhere that's going to be a big deal was as he was coming to Philadelphia to see Greg Turgeon. <laughs> he's coming to Philadelphia in September of 2015. I mean, did you hear that? The Pope is coming to Philadelphia in the month of September of 2015. I thought, this puts up a flag to me. I said, Deborah, did you hear that? She was like, what, what? I must have caught her sleeping. I said, hit the rewind button. So we rewound it and I said, I think they said he's coming to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. <laughs> September. Now listen, of 2015, so if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, think of this. We need to be prepared because time is getting shorter. Amen. Amen. The blood moons started in April of 2014. One we had on April of 2014. We had another one in September, I mean October of 2014. Then we're going to have another one in April 2015. And the last one, maybe, of all time is September of 2015. This is extremely important. The Shemitah started in September of 2014. It will be over. It will climax and be over on September of 2015. The Pope is coming to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on September of 2015. There is also two solar eclipses that never take place within the cycle of the four blood moons that are going to take place in 2015. I mean, these are, this, this word in Genesis 1, 14 to 16 there, where it says that these are signals and signs. This is like God sounding a trumpet in heaven or setting off a flare saying, look, something is about to happen. Get your house in order. Get ready. Luke 19. Luke 19, verse 41. Luke 19, 41 says, Now as he drew near, he saw the city, and he wept over it, Jerusalem. He wept over Jesus, wept over the city, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. But now... They're hidden from your eyes. Listen, there comes a time where things are hidden from your eyes. God himself will give you over to a reprobate mind. Where you think right is wrong and wrong is right. Your mind will be full of perversion. Thinking you're doing good while you're doing evil. For the days will come upon you where your enemies will build an embankment around you. They'll surround you and close you in on every side. And they will level you out and your children within you to the ground. And 
and they will not leave in you one stone upon another. Why? Because you did not know the time of your visitation. Listen, this is a time of visitation. This is a time when the Spirit of God is saying, get yourself ready. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Go back in your Bibles to Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5, why do these things happen? Isaiah 5 verse 1 says, Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. Now we just, we're reading what his vineyard is, but listen. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruit, fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a tower in its midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth grapes. Listen, we're to be bearing forth fruit. Amen. This is a time where you need to be bearing forth fruit. Can you understand that one of the greatest events in the history of the world could happen in September or right after September of 2015? I mean, what are you doing? How are you preparing? How are you living your life? But it, but it brought forth wild grapes. He expected it to bring forth good grapes. But it brought forth wild grapes. Now listen to what he says. We talk about this proper positioning and the hedge being placed around us. Listen to what it says in verse 5. He said, I will take away its hedge. And it shall be burned. Just like we read in Luke 19.44 and break down its walls, and it shall be trampled, and I will lay it to waste. Jesus said he would lay it to waste. Listen, no one's going to tear his city down unless he permits it to happen. So he said, I will lay it to waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain on it at all. Say, so listen, Israel was re rebellious for 70 years and never honored the Shemitah for 70 years. So what God did is he placed judgment upon them and he caused them to go through seven years of barrenness and slavery. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah are his pleasant plan. And he looked for justice. Listen to this. He looked for justice. But behold, oppression. He looked for righteousness. But behold, there was a cry for help. Jesus asked the disciples, he said, when I return back to the earth, he didn't say when the rapture took place. He said, when I return back to the earth, Jesus himself even talked about his coming. Jesus never talked about the rapture. Jesus always talked about his coming. He said, when I return back to the earth, when I come back to the earth, Will I find faith? What would Jesus find today? He said, Woe to those who join house to house. Go over to verse 13 because of time. Uh, Isaiah 5 13. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have. Why? Why did they go into captivity? Because they have no knowledge. This is why most of the church and most of the people in the church are getting ripped to shreds today. This is why you're seeing homes broken. This is why you're seeing families severed. It's an attack of the devil because the people don't have any knowledge. And then when you try to tell them something, they know it all so you can't tell them anything. They team up for themselves teachers that want to tickle their ears so they just go somewhere where you tell them something they already know. So they're stuck in this ditch of never requiring any knowledge. They're just stuck in that same place. If you go to a big old pond out there and the pond is blocked up on one side, there's only just input, no output, it'll become stagnant. And everything in that pond will eventually die. 
And this is what happens to most believers. They have all input. They're just, oh, 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 just feed me, feed me, feed me. And then they're never doing anything. They get lulled to sleep. Verse 13, therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Listen to this. They're honorable men. They're famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. I thought of Amos 8.11 where it says there's going to be a famine in the land. Not a famine of water and food, but a famine for the hearing of the word of God. That's what's going to happen in the last days. You hear people that preach truth now or want to tell anybody anything about getting ready. Not for something that's going to happen like it's not happening. Things are happening right now. We're hearing of the more things that ISIS is Mike told me about Sunday, Sunday afternoon that they took another American, uh, United States journalist, and ISIS beheaded him. I mean, mocking our president, saying, oh, you're not going to put your boots on the ground over here. This is what's going to happen. I mean, what are we doing? We're just letting these things take place, acting like it's going to get better? Listen, it's only going to get worse. Talking about Ebola, another man died with Ebola today. Yeah, the, then the other guy in Lincoln here. That they're watching now because he just come back from over there. I'm thinking, Lincoln here? I mean, that's getting kind of close to home. And I thought about this a while ago. I said, you know, that's how much the devil hates me. I could hide in a place, put me in the middle of nowhere, put me out in a town where nobody would ever know, and somehow, someway, somebody would bring a bullet into that place. Yeah. And that's what I thought. So, we'll see. There's a 21-day incubation period, and I hope no one ever gets it. But things are happening, is what I'm saying. Open up your eyes, get your head out of the bucket, and look around. Therefore, Sheol has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he who is jubilant shall descend into it. People shall be brought down and each man shall be humbled. And the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But listen to this. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted. How? In judgment. How else is the Lord going to be exalted if we don't honor Him? If nobody's preaching the truth anymore and the church is on a decline, <laughs> nobody's preaching the truth, how's God going to get honor? Yeah. It's going to happen through judgment. He's going to enforce judgment. Now listen, how does God enforce judgment? The, the two most popular ways throughout history that God enforces judgment on a nation is one, the weather. And we was at home looking at that storm that hit New York that a guy died. He was in snow. His car was found 12 foot under snow. He suffocated, had a heart attack. 12 foot under snow. People were just dying and caught out in that weather. This is November. You think about the hurricanes and the tornadoes and just wait if one of those large volcanoes decide to go off. I mean, our world can change so fast. And what I'm saying with this being the year of the Shemitah and seeing what's happening, get yourself ready. That's all you need to be doing is getting ready. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God who is holy shall be hallowed in righteousness. And then listen, the lambs shall feed in their pastures. Listen, the problem right now is, is the lambs aren't feeding. Because there's no real food going out. You just think of how much old stale bread's being preached and taught. 
I mean, you listen to some things. I turn some stuff on the radio. I listen to some stuff on the television. And I'm like, I can't even believe these guys are still preaching this stuff. Amen. This is like the same stuff 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Amen. I think about what it says in Hebrews when we're going to leave the elementary principles and the teachings about the Christ. It says that in Hebrews. It says, when are they going to leave the elementary principles and teachings about the Christ? Things such as faith, the laying on of hands, baptism, repentance. I mean, these are big elementary teachings about the Christ. It shows us that we're still babies in a sense. Then when you want to bring out true meat and let people find what the truth really is, they can't handle it. Amen. It scares them. Boom. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity. What could that possibly mean? Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity. Listen, this is our world today. Amen. People are so vain. I mean, you what? You turn on a television show and just watch, and then all of a sudden, two guys are kissing. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, you've got to be kidding me that they got this stuff on television now. Because, see, I'm not like some people. I don't watch that all the time, so my senses have not been seared yet, as though with a branding on it, like the Bible says. <laughs> So when I see some of that stuff, it grieves me. And sin as if with a cart rope. Just think about that. It's just like you're toting your sin along with a cart rope. Hey, look what I got. Look at my cart. It's full. I'm in the grace. We just get more grace. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Listen, Isaiah 5 verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. If, if this is not what's happened to America, nothing has. <laughs> We have went from being a nation founded on Christian principles. We were a Christian nation. Amen. We were a blessed nation. Amen. And you think of the things that we have permitted to happen. Amen. Think of the things that we have permitted to happen. But yet, Rose said, taking prayer out of the school. Now listen, that's right where I'm going. That's right where I'm headed. Taking prayer out of the school. Amen. Because I shared about abortion on Sunday just to give you a piece. To show you something from 1973 to 2001 because it happened on the same day. The peak and then the fall and then the Twin Towers. And I wanted you to see that. But there's a lot more that happened before that. There's a lot more that happened that I've never heard from anybody. Not in no book, not on no TV, not on no radio, just some things I've been looking at. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light, and listen, and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is exactly what's happened to America. This is exactly what's gotten us to the point that we're at. Now, I don't know if it's going to get worse or we're falling off the cliff in September. I don't know if some things are really, really, really going to get bad. But time is extremely short. And that's why things are rapidly speeding up. Now listen, I think there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we don't even know about setting us up. That's where that bullfrog comes into play. Because we're just still getting comfortable. Ribbit, ribbit. 
And they just got the water lukewarm. They have not blasted it yet. And we're sitting there boiling alive and we don't even know it. Oh, we're so blessed. Everything's so great. If you don't stay mentally tough and if you don't stay on edge, you will be lulled to sleep. Amen. You will boil alive. You will be a dead man walking. Your blessings will become a curse. You'll become lackadaisical and easy. Oh, everything's okay. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Amen. That's going to happen to somebody. I decided to look at a few things and just put some numbers together. And since Rose mentioned taking prayer out of schools, we'll blame it on Rose. <laughs> Don't come after me, come after Rose. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1962. A Jew named Stephen Engel had prayer taken out of the schools. He was a Jew. He wasn't an atheist, he was a Jew. 1962, that's when prayer was officially taken out of the schools. It was a Jewish man, his wife, him and his wife and his family took it to the <coughs> Supreme Court. Then the year after, 1963, but what's amazing is a lot of these dates are right around September. Some of these are in September, some are right around September. 1963, the next thing that happened was is they banned Bible reading in schools. One short year later, they banned the Bible reading in schools. 1963. Up until that time, they was reading the Bible in school. As a matter of fact, that was one of the reasons for school. Because we were a Christian nation. Amen. And they used to teach the Bible. Then, in 1963, the courts overturned the, the teaching of evolution. They banned, there, it used to be banned that you couldn't teach evolution. They overturned that ruling saying that you should teach evolution. Talk about a drastic change within a one year period. After they took prayer out of school. Then we already talked about 1973, the legalization of abortions, and then since then, the, the figures are, they're over 55 million. They don't know how many babies have really been aborted, but they're saying that's how many that legalized, that people had known legalized abortions, documented abortions. Over 55 million children have been slaughtered since 1973. Children. You think God is not going to judge our nation? Yeah. Amen. Amen. 2014 was the legalization of marijuana. I thought this was interesting. The legalization of same-sex marriage. Watch how this took place. Do you, know, do you know what year that took place in? The legalization of same-sex marriage. That's what I thought, 2014. That's not true. The legalization of same-sex marriages first took place in Washington, D.C., March of 2010. There was three states legalized same-sex marriage in March 3rd of 2010, Washington, D.C., Maine, and Maryland. Then, in 2013, eight more states got on the bandwagon. Now see, this is how things happen. It's like a battle that we're losing. 
Things start out real slow and real, it's like legalization of marijuana. Well, people started talking about that a long time ago. I really remember that in the late 80s. That's when they first started talking about legalization of marijuana. It was in the late 80s. They're like, oh, that'll never happen, that'll never happen. Then it was just for medical reasons, then it was just for, you know, recreational use, and then everybody's just whacked out of their brain and can't even teach girls in these states anymore. But anyway, in 2014, 22 more states all decided to legalize same-sex marriage. So it went from three in 2010 to eight states in 2013 to 22 more states just in 2014. Do you see how that? It gets momentum. Listen, we have lost momentum. Because we sat back and let things happen. Because we didn't want to offend anybody. Amen. We didn't want to preach the truth. So, I just, I was in my office and I was praying and I thought, who's one of the most evil people ever to walk the face of the earth? Yeah. Hitler. I thought, I wonder, I mean the Holy Ghost brought this to me. I had no idea, I'd never heard this, never seen it, never read it, I've never heard anybody say anything about it. I thought, I know one thing, September of 1973 was a Shemitah year because we know that September and that September was the legalization of abortions. <clears throat> then we know that four Shemitahs after that, 28 years took us to 2001, one Shemitah where the Twin Towers fell, 9-11 in 2001. We know what Shemitah cycle, seven years after that, 2008. We know that the, twin that the um, largest fall in the um, New York stock market took place on September of 2008, the, the next Shemitah. So I start thinking, I wonder if anything ever happened to this guy on a Shemitah. So I start backdating years. And I found this piece. Adolf Hitler was voted Man of the Year. <laughs> Listen, Man of the Year, specifically on September 29th. It would be Elu 29, the exact day of the Shemitah. 1938. On the exact day. Think how many Jews did this man kill? And they honored him as man of the year, September 29th of 1938. Where was the church? You don't think there was Christians in Nazi Germany? You don't think we had Christians in America during this time period? What was going on then? And something that I found very interesting was something took place from that time, like September of 1938, or beginning of 1939, to 1945. It was a seven year Shemitah cycle, exactly. It was World War II. Think about that. These are phenomenal, life-changing, earth-shattering events that take place exactly from the start of the Shemitah, the cycle, the seven-year cycle, until the end. It is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. He was the most evil man ever to live. And they voted him man of the year. 
exactly on the Shemitah. And the curse that fell after that was for seven years there was a, a world war, the second world war that went on that ended in 1945. Listen, folks, these dates cannot be denied. These are things that are part of our history that we've got to be able to look back and see. That was exactly five Shemitahs. Five Shemitahs. 35 years exactly to the day. I think it's time for us to wake up. I think time is extremely short. I don't know how short it is, but I'm telling you something. I'm doing everything that I possibly can to be ready. Because we don't know how bad it's going to get. We don't know what's going to happen. But we see all this stuff swirling around us. We hear these journalists being beheaded. We hear about them bombing synagogues over there. We hear about them killing the, the uh, priests, the Jewish rabbis. I mean, they're killing them. They're bombing synagogues over there. I'm telling you this. They, they will not let that go unpunished. Israel will not do that. They'll go to war in a heartbeat. I don't know what's causing them to wait this long to see the things that are happening. Now, watch this. If, I'm just telling you this. If somebody comes out with a, with a major peace treaty near next September or from now till September of 2015, that might very well start the next seven years of tribulation. It very easily can happen that way. This could be just the beginning of that seven years. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it can be. Because a lot of things are looking that way. How, how bad can it continue to get before something really breaks over? I mean, things are, things are slip sliding away. Let's stand. I'm going to close in prayer this evening. Hallelujah. Deborah, I need you to press that button on. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the blessed name of your son Jesus, we come. And we thank you for your anointing in this place. Lord, we thank you for this word, for it truly is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our paths. Lord, I thank you for every single person that come out here on a Wednesday evening to hear the truth of your word. I pray that you would give them supernatural rest. I pray that you would bless them at their workplaces. I pray that you would give them that peace of God that surpasses all understanding and that you would guard their hearts and their minds. Father, for this truth, I, write that you, I pray that you write it upon our hearts. Let it be strength. Let it be strength to our spiritual man. Let us mount up with wings as eagles. Let us run and not grow weary. Let us walk and faint not. Let us learn to wait upon you. Let us learn to trust you. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.